divine greetings, divine greetings. We are going live on Facebook, beautiful kings and queens. Thank you for joining me today. I am going to be sharing what I eat in a day as a raw vegan, as a raw living foodist. Can't wait to share. I'm going to go behind my little table here, my little setup, and we will get right into it. Divine greetings, divine greetings, beautiful kings and queens. I'm so happy to be here with you today. Just going to take a moment to make sure that we are good on Facebook. Felt like streaming live today with a special treat. There we go. All right. Awesome. Welcome, welcome, my beautiful friends, friends and family. I hope you're doing great. I could see your comments here on my phone, so feel free to let me know if you have any questions or comments as I share today. I was having a really great live show earlier with my friend, Dr. Cornelio. We shared about greens today, green juices, how to incorporate more greens in our day. So I had this beautiful setup and I said, I want to share some more. I want to come on and let you know how you too can incorporate more greens, more veggies, more fruit into your lifestyle because truly this is the way to feel better to heal ourselves mind body and spirit and there's nothing more than i love than to share so <laughs> welcome let me catch my breath because this is always very exciting for me very challenging and i am here to face all my fears um, in order to share all the benefits yeah so let me say a little bit what I've been overcoming with these foods and why I'm so passionate about sharing them because it's about so much more than the food, right? <laughs> it's not just about the food. It's about what the foods do to us, how they help us to uplevel our life, how they help us to sleep better, have more energy, you know, think more clearly and, you know, dive deep into our passion in life. It's about knowing who we are, right? We are what we eat. So if we are eating constructive food, uh, constrictive foods and foods that are like blocking our bowels, blocking our meridians, blocking our energy centers, then we can't fully be there for ourselves. If we have digestive issues like what I used to have, I had so much digestive issues from diarrhea to constipation. <laughs> it was just a big disaster in there. And as we know, or we may not know, but our gut is really the brain of our entire body. You know, this is the main brain. So if our, you know, gut is not producing the proper serotonin and the proper, you know, digestive enzymes, then nothing else is going to function properly. So we really have to take care of our gut. That is first and foremost, I eat to eliminate. <laughs> That's my motto. Whenever I look at something, I say, okay, how is this going to help me eliminate? Either it's going to block me or it's going to help me heal. And really that's the source of all disease, right? I was depressed. I had chronic de depression. I had chronic anxiety. I had cystic acne, addictions. I was addicted to drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, junk food, you name it. I was so addicted to everything. And, you know, when I started realizing that I had to alkalize my body in order to overcome this, that's when the whole game changed, right? We don't need any pills. We don't need any medication from the doctors. We need more fruits, more greens to detoxify and cleanse the body out. And if you think this is a limited choice <laughs> for me, this is so expansive. This is so expansive of a way to consume, right? How many, how many really, you know, meats do we eat? We eat a few, yeah, chicken, you know, beef, shrimp. We stick to those ones. And but we have like hundreds and hundreds of variety of fruits and vegetables to choose from. And once we learn how to prepare them, once we learn how to, you know, make simple recipes, I'm going to show you how to make a yummy ranch dressing for the salad that's creamy, full of protein, made with hemp seeds. Um, you're going to see there's nothing that we can't enjoy, you know, within the raw living foods kingdom. <laughs> the juices as well. I got my yummy green juice here that I made. I'll tell you what went into this in just a minute. I also have a fruit juice and I will share a little bit about, yeah, what I do in a day. Typically <laughs> at the moment, I'm actually juice cleansing. So 
It's a little bit different what I'm doing right now. I am having exclusively liquids. However, on a typical day where I would eat, this kind of looks like what I would have in a day. Starting with a fruit juice, right? And the risings, we don't want to have anything too heavy on the body. Really breakfast is like one of the biggest misconceptions and myths on our planet and in our society. You know, the idea that we need a heavy breakfast, uh, dense foods early. No, we need to continue eliminating from the night. The night is our detox. So we want to wake up and either fast for a couple of hours, right? A little fast, like dry fast completely, or go with some very um, cleansing fruit, <laughs> such as oranges, or perhaps some pineapple or apples, watery fruit, watermelon is also excellent in the rising, or a fruit juice. In this fruit juice right here, I got pineapple, grapes, green apple, ginger, and lime. Yeah, so that's my yummy breakfast drink. And it's so good, it's so tasty, so like tart because of the lime. I love that. Hi, beautiful. Hi, everybody who's coming on. <laughs> so good to see you. So good to see you. Haven't done a live on my own in a while. So I'm really happy to have you here joining me today. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. All right. So that would be typically the juice that I would start my day with. And then I would move on to perhaps some mono fruit meals. So I love to eat most of my days, I eat fruit. During the day, it's all about the fruit. <laughs> In the evenings, I'll go more into the salads, but during the day, I have my juice, and then I'll have probably all of these clementines. <laughs> when we do mono fruit meals, we need to eat quite a large quantity of fruit in order to feel satiated, in order to feel full and energized. Don't skimp on the fruit. <laughs> if you're going raw vegan, that's really where we wanna get the most of our calories, the most of our nutrition, and also the most of our sati satiation um, so that we're not craving other foods, right? We're not going for the junk food. We're not going for the, for the cooked um, you know, starches like pastas or you know, even the rice. Um, we want to, well, I mean, if, if we're in transition, it's okay to have a little bit of rice, but we want to try to, as much as possible, elim start eliminating the processed foods, right? Anything that's processed, anything that's made with white flour, anything that's made with, you know, processed like sugar or artificial flavorings and things that are in a package, we want to try to aim as much as possible to go for the raw, unfiltered, <laughs> unprocessed, undenatured foods that come from the earth, that God put for us to consume. And this is the promise of perfect health when we consume this way. We restore ourselves to the way God intended us to be and to thrive. <laughs> so mono fruit meal, clementines, or I would have watermelon, depending on how <laughs> sex pot. <laughs> what? <laughs> Please elaborate, Queen Magri. <laughs> You're so funny. Um, <laughs> you distracted me. So oh, where was I? Watermelon. Have you seen those like fruitarians where they take like a whole half a watermelon and they just scoop it out with their spoon? Like I love to do that too, especially in the sun, in the summertime, on the beach, just cut a whole watermelon and eat that. That is the best food ever. And that would be like a meal. But like I said, we have to have a lot of calories from the fruit in order to feel full. Yeah, or if I have apples, I would probably have like at least five apples as a meal. That would be like a mono fruit meal. And the benefits of mono fruit fasting is the ability for the body to digest the food. It just goes down so easy. It's smooth. Um, the less complex the meal, the better it's going to be for the digestion. So we want to keep it as simple as possible or mix a few fruits together that go well together. So, you know, some people do the food combining um, chart. I tend to gravitate towards that because I have kind of difficult digestion when it comes to like, I wouldn't mix like fruit and nuts, for example, that just doesn't feel good. But, uh, you know, like citrus and apple would go well together. 
um, apple and banana, subacidic and sweet would go well together, things like that. <laughs> berries, berries could go well with either apple or the or the clementine, but we want to try to keep it as simple as possible. <laughs> so boring. <laughs> Aw, thanks. Oh, sex pot means sexy. <laughs> You're sweet. Thanks, Magri. <laughs> You're sexy too. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, they're boring a little bit. <laughs> I get used to them after a while. I get used to them. Yeah, I used to think they were really boring, but the more I do them, the better they feel and the more I actually really enjoy having them. And then maybe an hour later, you could have another mono fruit meal or mix like two or three fruits together, like a little fruit salad. That's good too. Do whatever feels good to you. You know, we have to find joy in this journey we have to find grace and our own it has to be a happy journey you know this took me many many years to get to this point where I am you know thriving on raw living foods I'm not here to say that like it's an easy journey it's a hard journey sometimes but it's so worth it I'm telling you like I used to think this was a restrictive way of eating when somebody told me a few years ago and said oh my gosh you know you'll only eat fruits and veggies for the rest of your life, I'd be like, oh, <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> what about my breads? What about my, you know, my hot dogs and my ribs and my chicken? <laughs> like, I would have been like, no, that's too much. So, but I was sick, you know, and then I had a choice. Either I fall down this path of the medical industry and pills and pharmaceuticals, which I did go down, or I take my life into my own hands and I start making changes. So, you know, even if the change means having less of something, if you still want to have the chicken or the meat, have a little bit and then make sure that the most of your meal is a salad, for example, for dinner, instead of the rice and the potatoes and a little bit of cooked veggies, start bulking up on volume when it comes to fruits and veggies. <laughs> Let me see. I don't usually follow food combining with fruits. Yeah. No, if it doesn't bother you, then you don't have to do the fruit combining. It depends, you know, it depends. There's different schools of thought. Some people say that, you know, you continue to eat different combinations and your hydrochloric acid will build up over time. And over time, you'll be able to have fruit and nuts mixed together. That's one way of looking at it. I have tried. I've just never really felt good doing that. So I rather keep them separate. I'll have my fruit before and then I'll have the nuts maybe you know, in the evening time, or at least an hour or two hours after I've, you know, eaten the sugar. It's because they digest at different times. So then they create like fermentation in the body. They could create bloating, gas, and things like that. Enzymes definitely help to digest better. But um, yeah, it is key for digestion. <laughs> uh, melon juice make you pee as, okay, do, do melon juices make you pee as much as eating a melon? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's definitely a lot of water in melons <laughs> and in melon juice for sure. You know, we uh, have to be kind of close to the bathroom all the time when we are a raw vegan because we do eat a lot of fruits, <laughs> you know, a mild inconvenience. But I will say, once your kidneys are filtering better, once your body is more alkaline, you don't need to pee that much. I will say that like when I was detoxing heavily, I definitely did have to pee a lot more than now, you know, so I could eat the same amount of fruit and it seems like my body's absorbing it a lot better. So I'm not eliminating, but the elimination, the like constant peeing is because the kidneys and the body just really needs to purge and cleanse. So it's a way of eliminating. So just continue to cleanse and detox. And also if you sweat, you know, you could sweat. If you eat a lot of melon, just make sure that you're getting some workouts in and you're sweating a lot. So then it can kind of get out from different ways into the, from the body instead of just through the urine. <laughs> Hi, Queen Norma. <laughs> good to see you. Digestion is good and you're cleared out. I don't think you have to worry too much about the food combining. Yeah, it depends. I don't know. I've cleared out a lot and I'm still really sensitive to the food combining, but who misses drugs? I miss drugs too. Hmm. You know, we miss it. 
of course we miss it. They were serving a purpose for a while in our life, right? We miss those foods. We miss the substances. But it's like, what kind of life do we want to live? You know, do we want to live a life of slavery or do we want to live a life of freedom? And I'm ready to miss it all the way in order to have the vitality and the, the clarity of mind and the physical health that I'm having right now. Have I gone back to drugs after giving them up? Yeah, you know, because I've missed them too. And I was like, oh, let me just go experiment with that. Let me just go see if, you know, maybe I'll have it different this time. Maybe I'll, I'll get it right this time. I'll have it under control. And it just got worse and worse each time. So I've surrendered. I've surrendered to the drugs. I've surrendered to, you know, the alcohol and the smoking and all of that. I am just, I praise God that like he delivered me from it. And I just hope that, <laughs> you know, nothing is a guarantee in life, but I just hope I stay on this track because the drugs really take us away from our, you know, what we're supposed to be doing. They are part of what we're supposed to do, the grand scheme of things. They were part of shaping us and shaping who we are to become. But at some point, our vibration just doesn't, doesn't match with those things anymore. They just don't, it's not the same frequency. So once we get out, once we cleanse and detoxify and we get the mucoid cloth out, we get the parasites that are guiding our mind, that are controlling our mind. Once we get those out, then we don't need the drugs. We don't need the alcohol. We don't need the marijuana. We just, we don't need them. We're a different person now. So yeah, we operate on a different, on a different frequency. Do you crave starch? Hmm, good question. I will crave the starch mentally and emotionally, but I do not crave it physically anymore. When I was transitioning, perhaps I did have some, you know, salivating moments when I would look at bread or look at pasta or rice and things like that. Um, I did have the physical addiction. However, I haven't had it in a long time. I've been completely raw for two years now. And before that, I was whole food, vegan, plant-based for about six years before that. So a total of eight years of plant-based. And even in those years, I had been already um, cutting back, you know, on all the gluten and the processed, like, you know, any kind of heated up starch or cooked starch. The last one I was still consuming was the sweet potato. So I just naturally went into the progression of, you know, no more rice, I went from regular pasta to gluten-free pasta, and then I let that go. Potatoes, I let that go, and I replaced it with sweet potatoes, which have a lower you know, glycemic index, and they're a little bit easier on the body. So sweet potatoes, steamed broccoli, and cooked beets were my last of the cooked veggies that I was having, and now I'm completely you know, raw. So I don't cook anything I consume, I keep all the enzymes, intact for life force right when we cook our foods we we take away the enzymes we kill some of the nutrients and they're okay to transition but we want to ideally have like at least 80 80 85 percent of our food be living foods <laughs> living foods for living kings and queens <laughs> yeah queen danielle has been raw for two and a half months congratulations i see queen Botanical Rhiannon as well. Check out her Instagram. She's been on an amazing raw journey as well. Lost so much weight and is sharing. She has a YouTube channel as well. <laughs> Aw, <laughs> thanks Queen Amber. <laughs> I love being here with all of you. Thank you. I should do this more often. I've been wanting to do some lives and it seems as though I love getting invitations from my friends and to really you know, push myself. And then I said, this is a great opportunity to connect um, on a more intimate level. I have everything set up. So I'm happy you're here with me. <laughs> Thanks so much, Queen Amber. You're a queen. We're all queens. We're all queens and kings. That's what it's all about. Like I've claimed it for myself because I realize who I am, but you're no different than me. You know, we're no different from each other. Like we're all royalty. We're all born, born divine. We're all like children of the most high. And when we remember who we are, when we start to love ourselves, then we start to eat this way. We don't want to put junk food in our bodies. We don't want to like, you know, put toxic waste in our sacred temple. It just doesn't match. 
I was saying earlier that like, it doesn't matter what people, anybody could pay me anything and I will not put certain foods in my mouth. Like there is nothing that will, you know, convince me otherwise. I don't care what people say. We also have to be so strong in who we are in order to, you know, transcend the societal norms, to transcend our families and our cultures and what people want to tell us to do or tell us is dangerous to do. We have to honor ourselves and trust ourselves and return back to the Garden of Eden within, right? Garden of Eden is within and this is, you know, heaven on earth. We start, it starts with us. <laughs> I'm going off. <laughs> I saw a question about mucoid plaque. Hi, King Fatty, how are you? So by eliminating the mucoid plaque, he asks, you can hydrate more and pee less? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so the thing that happens while the mucoid, so the mucoid plaque inside the body, uh, the mucoid plaque, first of all, is like this old rubbery waste that's been accumulated for years and years and years in the body that can only be released um, through detoxification, through juice cleansing or fruit feasting or going towards a all plant-based lifestyle. This has been accumulating for years and years and years in the body. And it stops the body from absorbing properly all the nutrients. It really stops us from, you know, just functioning properly. It's, it, it blocks the like um, lymphatic system. It blocks everything. It's just like, there's waste everywhere, even around the organs in the small intestine and the large intestine, um, around the heart, around the liver, like there's this buildup that happens, um, calcification of the glands. So the body can't operate at optimal, uh, capacity when we're so backed up with waste. So yeah, definitely getting out the mucoid plaque will help you to be in a better position to absorb all the foods and nutrients. And that's why we say it's, one of the best ways to um, transition to a plant to a raw vegan diet for those who have trouble. Some can do it without the juice cleanse. Some can definitely do it, you know, with eating more living foods. But a lot of us, like myself, for example, I could, I had a really hard time doing it. So a juice cleanse was like a very, you know, kind of aggressive, uh, therapeutic intervention in order to clear out the bowels and then after that I was just more tuned into the fruits and veggies and I also yeah I did not need to pee as much afterwards yeah I hope that answers your question in as much uh, of my <laughs> scientific words that I have I'm just here to share my experience if anybody has more knowledge or inspiration or information to share as well please share it because um, you know it's Sometimes I feel like a plumbing system because I can't stay hydrated. Even eating a watermelon leaves me parched afterwards. Mm -hmm. That could definitely be a symptom of detox as well. When you're feeling dehydrated, um, even during my juice cleanse, sometimes I feel kind of dehydrated, but it's not because I'm not hydrating a lot. I am. Uh, hmm, I'm not sure how to explain that but definitely keep it up, <laughs> keep it up and keep eating those fruits. Cause I think like even pineapple, for example, you can have some detox symptoms, like your lips could be tingling or it could even burn your mouth. But if you continue to, to cleanse and detoxify, then, you know, you're, you're eventually going to be able to assimilate those fruits better. And they're going to be so nourishing. Yes, definitely eat melons on your own. Thanks for mentioning that Queen, Queen Rhiannon, because that's one of the rules of the food combining is having the melons on their own. They don't really mix with any other fruit. They digest so fast that you want to have them on their own. So cantaloupe, honeydew melon, and watermelon have them on their own. Thank you for saying that. What's your opinion on people saying that mucoid plaque doesn't exist because it's apparently nowhere to be seen during a colonoscopy? It's obvious a colonoscopy can't reach the small intestine. Yeah, exactly. It comes from the small intestine and it also comes from the interstitial fluid in like all the different parts of the lymphatic system. So like I said, around the organs and things like that. So yeah, I mean, anybody who says it doesn't exist has just never released their mucoid plaque. <laughs> Let me just put it that way <laughs> because anybody who's released it shouts it on top of the rooftops, you know, and takes pictures of it and holds it up with the chopstick, takes pictures and like makes videos about it. It's absolutely unbelievable. It comes out and is, is different from regular 
PCs, you could like, sorry to be gross, but like you can literally hold it up and it's a rubbery piece of waste. Um, and I have seen people remove it in various ways. So with husk and clay, also I've seen people removing it with a water fast and with juice cleansing with no husk and clay. So it is not the husk and clay that create this. Um, it is just a deeper level of cleansing that, that happens when we give the body the proper oxygenation and you know, give the life to the cells for them to clean, them, clean themselves out. And also, I just want to say that like the medical industry, they know about this. <laughs> they probably very much know about this and they really don't want us to have access to this kind of information. They really don't want us to heal ourselves. So a lot of things that seem very natural to us, like even curing cancer or, you know, healing AIDS and herpes and all these things, like this is the solution, herbs, fruit, veggies, and detoxification, but we're not hearing about that. We're hearing about, you know, all kinds of stuff to mask the real solution because they want their agenda to continue and you know, <laughs> all of that good stuff. So we have to dig deep. We have to look for the answers ourselves. We have to look for the teachers that we resonate with that are offering us what makes more sense, right? Does it make more sense to go to nature to eliminate and to get this out? Or does it make sense to continue to, you know, push the symptoms down with pills and pills and more pills? So there's not one, um, you know, magic cure. It's a series of different journeys. Um, like I'm on my third extended juice cleanse right now. People are like, oh, why are you doing another one? I did 113 days two years ago. I did another 66 days six months later, and I am like 83 days into my third one. And I'm telling you, I'm still releasing a lot of old waste. So where the heck does it come from? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. All I know is we're full of shit. <laughs> we are full of shit. We're walking around with a lot of unprocessed and undigested foods in the system. And I know for a fact, is the number one cause of all diseases, acidosis and toxic, toxemia, toxemia, how do you say it? Toxemia, oh my God, I'm like saying it wrong, but like toxic waste, basically <laughs> like acidosis from the body. And, you know, the lymphatic system is the most important thing that needs to drain, cleanse and we, we restore ourselves to better health. You know, even tumors can disappear with this way. There's no need for other interventions. There's no need for anything else that we need to, you know, put into our bodies that's not natural. Yeah, Queen Paula says, mucoid plaque is real. It has come out of me. Yeah, <laughs> it has. It's amazing. People who claim otherwise have not had their own experience with it. Exactly. But just because they haven't, it doesn't mean it's not real. Yeah, just have your experience with it, you know, get yourself a 40 day juice cleanse. 40 day juice cleanse minimum, get the mucoid plaque out and you will see it for yourself. And it could take more than 40 days. I just want to say some people take 60, 90 or hundred days plus, but once you're committed to the process, once you know that this is what you need to do, then you go the distance no matter what. Yeah. What, what did you pump your stomach with uh, King Fatty? with roasted potatoes. I still crave food even after pumping my stomach beyond capacity with roasted potatoes. You mean you ate so much roasted potatoes? Yeah, exactly. People will have like big bellies. That's, that's like over a hundred pounds of <laughs> waste. But eating like this in a day-to-day -day basis will help to eliminate even if you don't do a juice cleanse because I know it's not in everybody's um, you know, means or reach to do that smoothies, juices. Sometimes I'll make myself a smoothie as well in the day with bananas, berries, some chia seeds, and a little bit of homemade, a um, little bit of almond milk would be okay because it's not like the whole almond. I digest that well or some water or coconut water. All right, let's move on to this green juice that I made. So this was so good. I've been drinking it. I put cucumbers, celery, kale, green apples, parsley, cilantro, dill, and lime. <laughs> Let me try to repeat that. <laughs> Cucumbers, celery, 
kale, green apple, parsley, cilantro, dill, and lime. <laughs> I don't really measure, I just kind of put it as I feel and I taste it after it's done and I just see, you know, if it needs a little bit more sweet, I like to put some fruit in there. And uh, I also put a little bit of grapes, but it's not necessary. I just had a lot of grapes, so I put them in a little bit of lime so that you could balance off the greens and the fruit. And it's so good. I prefer to have my green juice in the evening personally, but I know some people like to have it during the day as well. But in terms of like getting your energy, you really want to have it from the fruit and the fruit juices during the day. And the greens are really good for like, you know, anchoring and balancing things out in the evening time and grounding as well. You don't want to have too much fruit in the evening time. It's good to have it during the day for max energy. So yeah, I made it in my amazing Nama J2 juicer, which is so good. I love her so much. I use her every day. <laughs> She's so easy to use. And okay, so the juices, it's very important to strain them, right? So what I like to do, because you want to remove the insoluble fiber from the juice, so that you give your digestive system a break, especially if you're juice cleansing, it's very important. If you're not juice cleansing, then you could keep a little bit of fiber. It's not that big of a deal, but you'll have like little granules of, you know, <laughs> like produce, which is fine. I strain it in a metal fine mesh strainer like this. I usually put it in a big bowl like this, and then I transfer it into a glass jar like this. Um, I am about to grow my own fruits and veggies, but at the moment, no, I am buying them because I am in Montreal, Canada. I'm living in an apartment right now, so it's a little bit challenging for me to grow my own food, but it is definitely my goal to get to the land and to start growing in Belize. We are so blessed in Belize. I can't wait to go back and eat all the fresh, fresh fruits and veggies. We're so blessed. Mangoes, bananas, pineapple. <laughs> it's the perfect climate to grow our own food, and I definitely encourage all my friends to you know, explore those possibilities or joining other communities or getting together with people who, you know, somebody who has a piece of land who might want to, you know, start doing this because it's the way forward. And I was saying earlier that a lot of these foods, even though they say organic, they have a lot of pesticides, they have a lot of agrochemicals in them that we are ingesting, that we are taking in. So no matter how pure the fruit is, it's always better to grow our own because we know exactly what goes in it and to do it uh, organically with no chemicals. <laughs> Hey, King Tommy, good to meet you here. Good to see you. I see my friend Alvin is on too. Okay, sorry, sorry, Fatty, I misunderstood. Well, I meant that no matter how much cooked food I eat in one sitting, I am still unsatisfied, but fruit has the opposite effect. Uh, okay, well, hmm. so fruit satiates you? Yeah, potatoes, I mean, what we need is the nutrients. You know, what we need is the life living force, the enzymes, the nutrients, the minerals, like the superfoods, like sprouts, for example, will be much more nourishing than eating a potato. You know, they will satisfy your cells. They will feed your cells. Potatoes is, it's like, it's just like a, like a, I don't want to say like a fluffer, but it's like, uh, it has some vitamins and minerals. I don't want to say it doesn't, but it's not as nourishing as going for a big salad, you know, or eating like, yeah, because the fruit is more satiating because that's what we're supposed to be eating. We're actually frugivores by nature. We're actually fruitarians by nature. So the closer we lean into the fruits and veggies, yeah, it's so addictive. Starch is very addictive. <laughs> it's very addictive. It's, it's very soothing. It's very numbing but it's not the best. Like if I eat a potato, I'll just give you an example. Like at the, at the place where I'm at right now, if I eat a potato, it will knock me out. It will put me to sleep and I will be depressed for the next two or three days. You know, that's the effect that it has on me because I've cleansed my body so much and I've gone to this place where I just can't process it anymore. And it actually is really damaging to me. And I'm not saying you have to, you know, give up potatoes completely. Everybody is where they're at, but I would definitely encourage you to have more of the living foods next to the potato or the starch that you're having. 
Yes. And at some point, your body is just going to like naturally gravitate towards those foods and you're just naturally not going to want the other ones so much. Hey, hey, Chandan. Hey, Mora. Good to see you. <laughs> yes. All right. So we got the green juice down. We got the fruit juice down. I'm going to talk a little bit about this amazing salad that I made. Volume is super important when we're going raw. I would probably eat all of this in a sitting. <laughs> it has romaine under, it has tomatoes, cucumber, some uh, grated beets, grated carrots, some onion, and that's pretty much it. You could put some spinach in there, arugula, and some sprouts on top for protein. Super jam-packed, greens have protein. You don't have to eat any animals to get your protein. You don't have to eat any tofu. I don't recommend eating any kind of soy products. Um, try to stay away from the soy and any processed fake vegan meats as, as much as possible. I mean, they're okay in transition. However, they're really better to be eliminated <laughs> because they kind of keep us locked in this, you know, state of addictive craving, right? For like the meat products and the that taste and that texture where we really want to kind of move towards enjoying these crispy, crunchy living foods that come from the earth in their natural state. And you can also make some really yummy raw vegan burgers that you can make in the dehydrator. So it like you could even use like the pulp from the juices, mix it with like carrots, celery, onion, uh, flaxseed, <laughs> and you make that into a pulp. You put a little bit of herb spices and you can make them into patties into the dehydrator. You can make some crackers with that, yummy burgers and all kinds of stuff. So if you are missing the burgers, like at least have to try to have it um, in living foods because in the dehydrator, they stay living foods and they're not fried or anything like that. The steps in the direction <laughs> of the living foods organically is the best way to go. Yes, you know it, queen, you're doing it. Share a little bit about your, your experience, Queen Nancy. Tell us what you've been doing. You're such an inspiration too. <laughs> I'm so impressed with you. Yeah, potatoes are a bit drying. Yeah, they're dehydrating for sure. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just thinking about French fries. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> like sometimes somebody was asking if I'm still addicted to starch. <sighs> like I'll lie if I say that I never think about it. You know, that would be a lie. But like I was saying, after a while of detoxing and cleansing, it's more of a psychological addiction than an actual physical addiction of like, I need it. Now I could play it forward and know that if I eat those potatoes, how I'm gonna feel tomorrow and the next day. And so I'd rather not even go there. Yeah, and I just don't know how to stop <laughs> once I start. Cooked food is a drug, yes, buddy. Because humans make drugs out of anything and kitchens are drug labs, of course. Food is a drug, definitely. But with like the living foods, I'll say even, even within the living foods, there are certain foods that are more addictive than others. Like the nuts, for example, right? The fatty, the almonds, the cashews, like we can just kind of eat a lot of them. But with fruit is different because you, you'll eat enough and you'll be satisfied with that. And if you give yourself some time, you'll get even more and more satisfied as you go along. You know, um, one trick I had that I like to share when I was transitioning, a friend told me this, that just before I put a fruit to my mouth, I would repeat to myself in my mind, this is food. It was like I was like, repro I had to reprogram myself to know what is food because I had been so lost and so programmed with what is food, you know, like is chips food, is cereal food? Like we grow up thinking mac and cheese is food, is not food. <laughs> so I had to literally take the time to reprogram my mind. So every time I would take a bite, I would say, this is food, this is food. And so my mind, my body, like they got in sync to knowing that fruit is food. And so that's why I am a little bit more tuned in to what is food because we've been so misled, you know, it's not our fault. Our schooling system is designed this way. Society doesn't want us to know the truth. So we have to find our own truth and find what resonates with us. 
So yes, it's a total reprogramming of our mind, body, spirit in order to come back to the Garden of Eden and to our natural way of being and living. Let's read this comment. Hey, Queen Stasia. Nice to see you here. So happy you joined us. Day 15, Queen Nancy. Wow, my body feels great. So amazing. Such an inspiration. Anybody can do this. Anybody can do this. Once you have a big enough why, once you know in your heart what it is that you need, then nothing can get in your way. Nobody telling you anything, no amount of even fear that you might have inside yourself that stops you from living your best life will stop you. Because that's what it is, right? We're kind of scared of our own light. We're kind of scared of our own power. And maybe somewhere inside we feel like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be like so, so strong, you know, if I truly am healthy and do we give ourselves that that right or that permission to be amazing <laughs> to be our best self because that's what it's all about when you love yourself then you're ready to like do anything to be your best self that's where I'm at I don't care what anybody says I just love myself so much that this is the way I choose to consume every day despite all odds <laughs> all right Chandan says when we are infantile development, we build up colonies of various bacteria, which will stay with us during our whole lifetimes. This is why it could be that some people can handle certain transitions better than others. Very interesting. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, we are literally like passed on whatever our mother was eating in her womb, you know, while we were in her womb, we take that on whether she was what, what she was consuming we have like a certain uh baggage that we come into this world with and then you know it goes as far back as her mother and her mother and all all the family so definitely some people have a harder time or an easier time transitioning for sure but um always respect the transition and there's different ways to transition you know like i say you could either do a juice cleanse or start incorporating more fruits and veggies in your day. Um, the herbs as well are super healing. If anybody's interested in getting some herbal protocols, um, my friend here, Bobby Makijani, uh, Chandan also, as he's known as Chandan as well. He has an amazing um, herb shop in Orange Walk in Belize. Reach out to him because he's got some really great advice and knowledge about how to heal ourselves with these natural herbs that help to alkalize the body, help bring electricity to the body and to the cells, right? To oxygenate the, the body, to get things out, like purge from the gut and also tune us into these foods that we're supposed to be consuming. There's so many different ways, you know? Like I said, it's taken me eight years to get to this point. It did not happen overnight. So be gentle with yourself and enjoy your journey. Love your journey, love yourself where you're at and just start incorporating more fruits and veggies in your day and learn a couple of tricks. I'm gonna show you how to make this yummy um, ranch dressing as well. I made it here. I made it already earlier when I was on the call. I don't know if you could see it, <laughs> it's gonna fall. Let me do it here so that you can see how creamy it is. But this is like, it's easy, it's like, and I wanna put it in the salad just because I am not eating at the moment, I'm juicing. So I'm going to leave the salad as it is. But this is a really creamy ranch dressing that I made with hemp seeds. So it was half a cup of hemp seeds. I also put half a cup of cashews, which I soaked. Always soak your nuts and seeds at least six hours before to make them more digestible and help to absorb them better. So half a cup of cashews, half a cup of hemp seeds, about half a cup of water as well that I put in this um, Nutribullet. You want a high speed blender. I don't know if you can see the Nutribullet. Nope, there's too much stuff. <laughs> and salt, some pepper, a little bit of garlic powder, and some Italian seasonings. Pretty much. I put some basil as well, some fresh basil from the market. And then you could put any kind of seasonings that you want. You can make it um, into like a thousand island. You could put a little bit of paprika. You could put some hot sauce. I got some Mary Sharks here <laughs> for my friends in Belize. This is the best hot sauce. It's not 100% raw, um, but you know, sometimes I allow myself a little 0.1% of certain foods, you know, like I always admit to, to doing that. I am, you know, a purist, but also 
if I'm gonna put a little bit of maple syrup, you know, it's not the end of the world, right? It's like really hard to be 100% in this day and age. We can do it. Um, I'm heading towards there. I am raw vegan. From the moment you are 80% up, I consider you raw vegan and a living foodist. But I try to be as close to the 100% as possible. But yeah, I'll have a little bit of hot sauce here and there. Um, that's not a big deal. So, okay, so yeah, that was the dressing. Hemp seeds, cashews, water. And then you have a ranch dressing. You could almost, uh, you could also make a Caesar dressing. If you use nutritional yeast, you could put a little bit of nutritional yeast for the cheesy flavor. I prefer not to though. Oh, and some lime. And you could put a date if you like it sweet. Sorry, I'm not <laughs> being very clear, but if you have any questions, reach out to me. I'll be happy to give you more in detail the recipe. If you need support, join our support community as well. It's donation-based called Kings and Queens of Raw. And I'm happy to welcome you. We're all welcome, you know, welcoming you into our group. We share recipes, inspiration, connection, which is really important when we are doing these changes. It's hard to do them on our own when like everybody around us is just eating junk and they don't really care about themselves. So it's good to have a group of people that are honoring themselves and on this path. So if you have any questions, we're there for you. A lot of our kings and queens are on the live today. <laughs> so it's so good to see you all here. And all right, so I have another question. Have you seen any changes in your dental health when you committed to eating raw? I personally did not. However, I know a lot of people have, but I have not. I just, I don't know, maybe um, there's also certain like predispositions when it comes to teeth. So some people might have a weak um, constitution when it comes to their teeth. Um, but I know that if you push through the detox, you know, whatever it is that may be happening with the teeth, because the teeth are living, they're living, they're breathing, they detox as well. So when I do juice cleanse, okay, I, I shouldn't say no, because when I do juice cleanse, I do get like fuzzy teeth. So the, the, the detox is happening through the teeth but after a while it goes away. So whatever it is, even discoloration, um, I've heard of people having discoloration, even teeth that start to move and then they just kind of anchor themselves back in. Like don't freak out. A lot of things can happen during detox and it's all part of the, you know, it's all part of the journey. But no, I don't have any issues with my teeth. Wow, Queen Mara is 35 days on a juice fast but I wasn't raw before. After this, I want to stay mostly raw. So thanks, this is helpful. Awesome, thank you. I'm so happy you're joining me today. You're joining all of us. Thanks for being here. Yeah, come into our community. It's kingsandqueensofraw.com slash our tribe. If you'd like to join, it's a private Facebook group. We do a royal, royal gathering each Saturday as well, where we invite a special guest speaker to come and share their journey with us and how they've, overcome, you know, and also some helpful tips on how to be more raw. And being raw is about so much more than food, right? It's not just about the food. It's about getting in touch with who we are, getting in touch with our emotions, getting um, more intimate with what we want in life. How do we express ourselves? And just being raw, you know what I mean? Like as a person, as humans, we're so like used to having these masks on and these like these characters that we portray that we carry through our life and being raw I think the food will come from us being raw and authentic with our own self I think it's a result of the work that we do on ourselves like we can't force it we can't be like oh I want to be you know eating a certain way but I'm not going to do any inner work like do the inner work and the food will be naturally coming side by side with your self-love that's growing that's, uh, that's my, that's been my experience is that, you know, if we want to lose weight, we have to do it from a place of like, you know, loving ourselves, not forcing ourselves to, to do something. We have to come from a place of love and acceptance and compassion for ourselves first. And that's how it grows. <laughs> what do y'all think? Ooh, let me take a sip of this. <laughs> I've been talking a lot. <laughs> This is my new drug. 
<laughs> doing these videos get me high. <laughs> it's hard and it's fun. Is straining your juice is necessary? So it depends what your goal is. If you are doing a juice cleanse, absolutely. It is necessary to strain your juice because we want to remove all the insoluble fiber from the juice. The goal is to give the body a complete break from digesting so that we can eliminate all the old waste. And it's hard to do if the body's still digesting. But if you're just having like, you know, a juice a day and you're having orange juice and you want to keep the pulp or you like the to have the, you know, the little pulp from the green juice, that's okay too. It's not a big deal. But yeah, if you're juice cleansing, definitely you have to strain the juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 35 days. How are you feeling? 35 days on your juice cleanse, Queen Mara? Yes, I'm juicing too. Feels good. It's like a reset. It saved my life. <laughs> yeah, I highly recommend it. Start off with maybe a three days or five days if you've never juiced cleansed before, or even one day to go on a liquid diet, see how it feels. And if you're getting some detox symptoms, then you know it's working. Don't be scared of the detox symptoms because that is an indicator of what needs to be healed in the body. And um, yeah, I'm feeling great. That's so good. Awesome. The detox is there as a blessing, you know, celebrate it, celebrate the headache, celebrate the tiredness, celebrate whatever comes up. Some might get some acne, you might get some breakouts, stuff might come out from your ears, your nose, mucus might come out from different places, but better out than in, right? Better out than in. Trust that your body knows exactly what it needs to do in order to heal. It always wants to bring you back to its natural state and to a state of well-being. Trust your body and stop obstructing it with things that are harmful and damaging and it will thank you in so many ways so many ways <laughs> queen paula says i'm currently making an amazing salad high in greens iceberg parsley peppermint celery leaves arugula i haven't had a salad in three and a half weeks so excited to enjoy it wow <laughs> that sounds delicious send us some pictures in the group we'd love to see your salad yeah salads are key in going raw um fatty i wanted to ask you earlier uh, now that i'm thinking about it do you have salads do you enjoy having salads with sprouts how do you feel after that because we were talking about fruit and then potatoes let us know if salads feel good for you because that may be an option as well to to feel more satisfied and nourished and full so yeah, in a nutshell, that'd be it. So I would have, yeah, just super simple. I mean, part of me was like, oh, do I really wanna make a what I eat in a day video? Because it's so simple what I eat and people might get scared of it, but it's like, this is so, this makes me so happy. And maybe my joy would like translate into the possibility of you doing it too, because this is so expansive as opposed to restrictive. You know, in my mind, I'm getting tons of, nutrients, vitamins from my juices, from the fruit. My salads are loaded, like loaded with protein. We really don't need that much protein. If you think about it, it's a huge misconception that we need. I don't know, like how many grams of protein they recommend, like 40 or 50 grams of protein. It's nuts. We don't need that much. And we definitely don't need it to come from animals because we don't even process the the, the animal proteins, right? We need the amino acids. This is what we need from tomatoes, from cucumbers, from fruits and veggies. And this dressing does have quite a bit of protein. So, you know, if you do want some protein, like definitely have this. If not, you could do like a little bit of lime. Um, if you're having some olive oil, you could put some olive oil and a little bit of salt. Keep it really simple for the dressing or invent your own dressing. You could almost, you could also make it with sesame seeds like an Asian sesame seed dressing, soak the sesame seeds, and then you can mix that up with some whatever you want. If you, if you digest the fruits and the fats together, then you could do a little bit of orange juice with the blended sesame seeds. I do feel like 
the only way I could mix maybe the fruit and then the fat is when I blend it or make it liquid. But <laughs> it's a little bit tricky, this food combining thing, because I know a lot of the raw desserts have combinations, you know, of cashews and fruit and all of that. So, you know, find your own way within there. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to encourage you to, to test it out and to experiment with your own body and your own energy. So this would be my evening. This would be my day the fruits, this, if I do have some dehydrated crackers, I would love to have that with my salad. Um, or I could also have some like zucchini noodles, zucchini pasta with either marinara sauce or a yummy like creamy cashew pesto. Yeah, I should make a video about that because that pesto is really good. Basically cashews, basil, <laughs> garlic, a little bit of lime and some water. If you're having nutritional yeast, you could add a little bit of that for cheesiness, but I'd rather not. So yeah, just super simple. And you mix that up with the, with the zucchini pasta and it's so good. There's so many ideas that we could do. I really recommend checking out um, my good friend, Melissa Keith. She has really yummy recipe books called The Joy of Raw Foods. And she makes like really, really amazing recipes. She even has like this Asian soup. <laughs> she has desserts. It's like a book set. So everything from desserts to main courses to appetizers, entertaining. There's a lot of different uh, raw foodists that are doing really great things. Lissa's Raw Food Romance is another great one that has really yummy recipes for dressings. So I invite you to check them out. Yes. All right. Any other questions? I will start wrapping it up. My daughter is about to come home from school. I'm so happy I connected with you today. I'd love to make these again. Please type in if you'd like me to, if you have other questions or if this has served you in any kind of way. I'm so happy to be here for, me, for you. Uh, Melissa, huh. that's a good question. I, I can't remember her last name. <laughs> Let me find her book real quick. I have it right here. One sec. I'll find it. I'll make my whole library fall. Melissa Maris. So this is her kind of her books. Raw food romance. Yeah. 30 day meal plan. And it's pretty low fat. She doesn't do to high fat recipes. Melissa Maris. But yeah, you can find her on YouTube as well, Raw Food Romance. Lissa's Raw Food Romance. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, I'm sending you so much love, everyone. Thank you for tuning in today. Thank you for your interest in the living foods and with what I have to share for you. Um, if you have any questions, reach out to me and I encourage you to support um sorry to, to join our support community kings and queens of raw we are all here for you all right much love and blessings to you have a wonderful rest of your monday i'll see you soon i'm gonna come around and <laughs> turn it off all right bye